Thank you, Mr. President. The Society for Threatened Peoples is very concerned by various governments' use of security campaigns and the global war on terrorism as pretexts to repress, persecute, and dilute the cultural identities of religious minorities in their countries. This issue represents a clear cross-section of the mandates of the Special Rapporteur in the promotion and protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms while countering terrorism and the independent expert on minority issues. A glaring example of this human rights issue is the Chinese government's treatment of the Uyghur people of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of China. The Chinese authorities use the fact that the Uyghurs happen to be Muslim to appeal to negative... Uh, there is a point of order asked by the delegation of China. You have the floor, man. Mr. President, I think what we're discussing now is item two and three on the agenda. We will discuss this uh, nationality of human rights issue. This is under the uh, agenda item four. The uh, statement is being made is, has nothing to do with these two uh, agenda items. I hope, Mr. President, you will intervene and stop this uh, statement. Uh, I, I would like to appeal to the speaker to frame her statement within the context of the agenda item. With this in mind, you, you can continue. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as, I, as I mentioned in my introduction, this intervention touches on the rights of minorities and the protection of human rights while countering terrorism. Both of those issues are clearly within, um, within agenda item three, and I thank you for allowing me to continue. As I was saying, the Chinese authorities use the fact that the Uyghurs happen to be Muslim to appeal to negative stereotypes that unfortunately and unjustly exist in the world about Muslims. The authorities equate Uyghurs' peaceful dissent and religious and cultural activities. I have to interrupt you again. There is another point of order by the delegation of China. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I think next week we are going to discuss the uh, uh, Aboriginals and, and the other minority nationalities' uh, rights. The Chinese delegation has just stated our position. What the uh, speaker's uh, statement doesn't have anything to do with agenda item two and three. Item three is an item under which we have interactive dialogue with the uh, human rights mechanisms and agencies. And item two is an agenda item under which we discuss the various reports from the agencies and mechanisms. So the current statement doesn't have anything to do with our uh, consideration at the moment. We would like to bring this to the attention of the president. And we would uh, ask this organization to cooperate with the council in his work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I give the floor to the delegation of the United States on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. President. We would just like to highlight the United States firmly believes that accredited NGOs must be permitted to speak. The voices of civil society are extremely important to the work of the Human Rights Council. Though member states, including the United States, may occasionally disagree with the content of their statements, the Council should cultivate an environment of openness where we can discuss our differences. Thank you for allowing the NGO to continue. I, thank you. I now give the floor to the delegation of UK on a point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We'd like to echo the comments just made by the United States. The United Kingdom similarly believes that all ECSOC accredited NGOs should be given the right to speak. You asked the NGO to set concern to con set their statement within the context of the uh, debate under question, which is item two and three, and the NGO did that. This is without prejudice to any of the uh, statements contained within the uh, comments made by the NGO, but uh, we firmly believe that the NGO should be allowed to speak uh, as they have contextualized their statement as you requested. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I'd like to remind that we are under item three, promotion and uh, protection of all human rights, civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights, including the right to development. According to the rules, uh, as long as the speaker is addressing human rights issues relevant to the agenda item under consideration, 
uh, she may refer to specific situations, but only by way of example or illustration. On the other hand, I'd like to appeal delegations that have different views to express their views or their disagreements by exercising their right of reply. With this in mind, I'd like to give back the floor to the representative of the NGO, but having with this in mind that she should frame her statement within the context of this item that I repeat again is item three, promotion and protection of all human rights, uh, civil, political, and economic rights, uh, including the right to development. I give you the floor with this in mind. You may continue. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. We're, we're talking about the, the Chinese government's uh, treatment of the Uyghur people as an example of um, of the, the use of the global war on terrorism as a, as a means, as a pretext to persecute minorities. And this, um, this issue involves the mandates of s many special procedures, um, but most, most importantly, the, the two that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the authorities equate Uyghurs' peaceful dissent in religious and cultural activities with terrorism and religious extremism. The Chinese authorities found an opportunity in the September 11th attacks to justify an increased and intensified crackdown on the Uyghur people. That crackdown has been all-encompassing. It has included the stifling of all forms of Uyghur dissent, the, the repression of Uyghurs' religious practice and independent expressions of ethnicity, and the overall dilution of Uyghurs' language, culture, culture and identity as a distinct people. A clear example of the authorities' attack on Uyghurs' heritage is the current raising of Sorry to interrupt you again. I give the floor to the delegation of China. Mr. President, the Chinese delegation supports NGOs to play a constructive part in the human rights process. As you mentioned earlier, what we are discussing now is item three on the agenda, i.e. Uh, social uh, economic rights and the rights to development. If the statement made by the NGO uh, representative should focus on the, uh, this area and these rights, however, this particular NGO's representative continue her statement, which has nothing to do with this agenda. She is still continues to refer to a specific country. We are not saying that she shouldn't make a statement. However, her statement doesn't indeed focused on the rights to development and the cultural, economic, and social rights. I hope the statement will continue, as you suggested, to focus on those rights. Otherwise, the, her statement should be uh, stopped. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I give the floor to the delegation of the United States on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to reiterate um, our previous statement. We are of the opinion that the intervention we just heard was indeed addressed to the subject matter at hand, and we ought not to narrowly interpret the broad language on the IBP on participation. We should apply a consistently high bar in considering speech inappropriate. These situations are real human rights situations that happen on the ground, and we must be able to use examples to discuss the promotion and protection of human rights on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we took note of the observation by the delegation of China. And uh, also uh, taking account my observation, I'm, the observation I made earlier, I would like to give the, back the floor to the delegation of NGO to conclude her statement. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I was mentioning the specific example of the current raising of the old city, of, city section of Kashgar, a centuries-old center of Uyghur civilization. And the crackdown on the Uyghurs has even further intensified since the July 2009 protests and ethnic unrest in Arimchi, the regional capital. 
Um, Uyghurs who peacefully exercise their freedom of expression run the risk of being imprisoned, tortured, and even executed. According to Amnesty... Uh, I'd like you to wrap up your statement because time is up. According to Amnesty International, with the exception of one Tibetan case, the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region is the only place in China where prisoners of conscience have been executed in recent years. The Society for Threatened Peoples respectfully requests the Human Rights Council to call on the Chinese authorities to stop using security campaigns in the global war on terrorism as reasons to repress and oppress innocent Uyghurs and to immediately and unconditionally release all Uyghur prisoners of conscience.